hello everyone. My name is Herman Chique Alfonso and I'm the Education Coordinator for the Dementia Society of Ottawa and Renfrew County. We recognize the importance of feeling safe as we age. Fraud and scams a common problem these days and this can be prevented and addressed through awareness, social support and reporting. On that note, this live webinar will help us to understand the problem of fraud and scams in our society and also how seniors can be affected and steps to protect us. Our invited speaker today is Mary Shuri from Elders of Use Prevention Ontario. If you have any question, uh, you can type your question on the Q&A box or the chat box at the bottom of your screen, and there will be a Q&A at the very end of this presentation. So without further ado, I will turn over to Mary and welcome Mary. Thank you. Thank you so much and good evening, everybody. I am so honored and excited to be with you this evening to speak about such an important topic that continues to sadly target our seniors uh, across Ontario, across Canada every single day. So my goal for tonight is to hopefully bring some really good information to help us speak about the awareness about these frauds and scams and some really realistic tools to help protect us against becoming a victim of a fraud or a scam that is targeting us. If I can sadly almost say every single day via many different means that they're coming at us. So we are excited to speak about this bring the education awareness, and as I say, arm us with the tools so we are protecting ourselves and our finances every day. So a little bit about uh, ourselves here at Elder Abuse Prevention Ontario. It's maybe the first time a few of you are um, hearing about us. We are the Ontario Government Project under the Ministry for Seniors and Accessibility. So we want to thank our ministry for continuing to fund this very important work that our team does every day across our province. We are also mandated in supporting and implementing the Ontario strategy to continue to combat elder abuse. Really our mission, and I almost say my personal passion as well as many of my colleagues, because not only is this my professional career, but on a personal level, looking after my mom, who is a senior, that I want to envision my province of Ontario, a safe place for all our seniors to be free from abuse, to have a strong voice, and to feel safe and respected every day. Our strategy works in three different areas of priorities. First and foremost, as we're doing today, bringing public education and awareness, because we know by promoting awareness and education about elder abuse, we are able to continue to bring valuable information to our communities. We train frontline staff all over the province, from policing partners, healthcare professionals, as we really say, any staff that is working frontline with seniors to enhance their knowledge and their skills, not only to recognize elder abuse, but to be able to respond. And working with coordinated community services across the province, because we believe in building partnerships and promoting information in our efforts to work together to combat elder abuse. So let's get into this and understand right now that frauds and scams have been really coined the crime of the 21st century. And especially when we're speaking about frauds and scams that are targeting our seniors. Some of the reasons people are saying, why is this happening? Why are these frauds and scams happening at an alarming rate? First and foremost, it is greed. There is this greed where an abuser who, who is a fraudster, a scam artist, a con artist, really feel that they have this, you know, need to take money away from people. It is simply based on greed that they have. There's a false sense of entitlement where they think, well, 
Seniors have money. Older adults have money. I should get a piece of that money. Why should they enjoy it? This is almost a delusional way that they think about these things. And sadly, they feel they have opportunity. Well, hmm, maybe seniors aren't that sharp or not that quick. I can scare them. I can intimidate them. I can convince them that I'm somebody who I'm not because my sole purpose is to defraud them. So these are some of what we call the components of not only frauds and scams, but what that financial abuse looks like when it is meant to target a senior. And the stats are shocking. They're heartbreaking. They are absolutely horrendous to see how much money these terrible con artists are extorting from Canadians every single year, every single day. So these are just some of the numbers, and again, reported numbers. So I can only give you numbers based on what's been reported through policing partners and through the Canadian Anti-Fraud Association. So I would hate to tell you, but we probably have to almost double some of these numbers, maybe even triple, because people don't report because of fear, because of shame, because of stigma. So just on what we're seeing from some of the more prominent scams, and I could honestly make this slide about three or four pages, these are the reality facts why these con artists continue to do this because they believe it is such a lucrative business. And I'm going to get into some more detail about some of the more higher level scams that are targeting our seniors right now, which is the grandparent scam. Many of you may have seen this on news reports through your local news stations, uh, through the um, newspaper, through your social media, but it continues to happen every day. A senior picks up the phone and someone is impersonating their grandchild. They have their name. They say, Grandma, Grandpa, it's Mary. I'm in trouble. And that is pretty much all. Sadly, she is going to be locked away for a long time. So what this grandparent scam is there to do is to frighten you. It is to play on your emotions. And it is to quickly get money from you. So many of these scams have a lot in common. It's about emotion to frighten you. With romance scams, it's an emotion to get you to fall in love. With a Bitcoin scam, it's an emotion to make you get rich quick. So every scam will play on an emotion. Then the ultimate goal is to get your money. So the emotions may be different, but the end result is always the same. We want your money. The romance scam is one to play on an emotion where someone will befriend you over social media, an email, a text message, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. And in a very short amount of time, profess a romance of love to you. So the emotion is to get you to become in love with them. And as soon as that happens, the next line is, I need money. Bitcoin, again, everyone may have a personal opinion on this, uh, you know, cryptocurrency. But right now, my warning to you is to be extremely careful because what scam artists are doing is trying to play on an emotion, 
let's get rich quick, pay me a, an amount of money, and I will promise you endless fortunes. And it doesn't happen. These are scams that come at us from all different angles. And our police departments continue to warn us to really be on the lookout for any of these get rich quick schemes, any of these I'm falling in love schemes or any of these grandma, grandpa, I'm in trouble schemes that they are coming at us and to know what they are ultimately only wanting to do is to get your money. And this is also where even Canada Border Services has been used and impersonated as were scams of people who are posing as officials from our border service agencies asking for payment or personal information. So people are trying to use, you know, high profile positions like the border services, the police, a lawyer, the bank, CRA. Because, you know, these are people that we respect, people who are working in what we normally know as important, trustworthy positions. So we have to be cautious when someone is claiming to be from these services and they're asking us for money. We know right there, this is a fraudulent call, email, text that is coming. And sad to say, look at the percentage of 42% that are coming through our telephone. So if you think about it, that almost means every other phone call we're getting is a scam. So every time we pick up that telephone, we need to be ready. We need to be alert to say, is this a legitimate call? Is this a scam that is coming through? 42%. Followed by, of course, what we're seeing coming to us more and more through text messaging, through our emails, and through the social email network of Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, you know, all these other social media platforms. So we need to be vigil. Because in all aspects of our life, we may use, of course, email, our regular mail, our internet for social networking with friends and family, door-to-door -door sales and scams still happening, text messaging, direct calls, meaning into our cell phone or our home phone, and of course, via the internet. So these are all aspects of our life that we use so every time we're accessing one of these tools, let's be alert and aware and cautious to know what is coming at us. Really, the phone is one of the most targeted ways fraudsters and scammers are coming to us. This can come from those automated calls you hear where this pre-recorded voice is telling you, it's your credit card company. You've been eligible for 0%. It's Amazon calling. You have a charge of $3,000 if you did not make this press one. It's Canada Post calling. We have a package for you. Please press one to have it released. Sadly, I could go on and on and on with all these fake phone calls, these robocalls, these spoofing calls that come at us every single day, claiming to be a reputable company or a reputable organization, but I'm telling you they are not. So what we need to do, and I'm going to go back to that in a moment, is recognize. Every time a phone call comes in, if we don't recognize the number, if we don't recognize who's calling us, if we don't recognize this information, let's reject it. Hang up. It is simple as that. I don't want you to ever engage or speak to the callers. Don't ask them any questions. I want you to reject. 
if you are still concerned that maybe it was the bank, maybe it was Rogers or Bell or Amazon, you call them back because you have the correct number to reach these companies. And trust me, they won't be upset that you hung up on them. And if it was really them calling, you simply say, I wasn't sure. I got a call. I needed to reject it in case it was a scam. Did you actually call me? So if it's the bank claiming to call you, if it's CRA claiming, and you know it's a scam, just reject it. If you're unsure, you give them a shout back. It's okay. You can call them back. So let's recognize. Let's take a moment and say, hang on. Something does not sound right. Reject it. Disconnect. Delete the email. Delete the text. Someone's at your door that you did not invite in. Close the door. And of course, we can report this to our local authorities at Crime Stoppers or the Canadian Anti-Fraud. And I'll get you that information as we get into the presentation because we need to look at these warning signs. These fraudsters want to develop a relationship with us, especially when it's that romance scam that they're trying to play on our emotions. Let's be very cautious. If someone is telling us, oh, I have a lucrative business. I have so much money and wealth and villas and airplanes and I own property. But I need you to send me some money because my money is locked up. So right there, that allure that they're trying to portray this lavish lifestyle, but they want your money. And the other fear factor, if someone is trying to scare you, intimidate you, make you nervous, make you feel like you're in trouble, make you feel like you've done something wrong, forbid you from telling anyone, don't you tell anyone, this is a very private matter. They are trying to control you. Please disconnect, hang up, do not engage with these horrible fraud and scam artists because this is the emotions they want to play on. We're going to recognize it. We're going to reject it and we're going to report it. Hang up. No more conversation whatsoever. You have every right to disconnect the call, delete the email, delete the text, and shut the door if someone who you did not invite to your home is at your front door. Because scammers want to make everything about in an emergency. It's urgent, money now, money now, money now. Everything is about life or death with a scammer because they need to quickly get in and get your money out and disappear. Same with any financial scams. You have to do it today. You can't hesitate. Or if they want you to buy something, it's only good right now. So everything is quick, urgent, right away. No, that's not how things work. Recognize what they're doing to you. Reject them right away and report it to your local authorities. You never need to feel pressured from anybody. Never, my friends, please never be afraid to say no. No one has the right to intimidate you, to make you feel high pressure sales are coming at you, that this is a once in a lifetime offer, that everything has to happen immediately. No, say no reach out to a friend or family, tell them what's just happened, and they will probably say to you, this sounds like it was a scam or a fraud. I'm glad you disconnected from the call or the email you deleted, and you did not engage with these people. Never be afraid to say no. We need to be mindful more and more what we're sharing online or information we're giving out over the telephone if it is an unsolicited call or someone who we're not sure who we're speaking to. Because our 
personal information like our date of birth, our address, our personal photos, our age, any life events we're sharing on social media. Sadly, this is sometimes information scammers use to try and act like they know us and know about us and then use it sadly against us. So always just to be cautious of what we're posting online and who we're giving personal information to. We need to stay safe on our computers. We need to try and make sure we're not leaving information open where somebody could see perhaps our banking information or our passwords when we're putting them in because we don't know if we're using our computer, say in a public place like a library, who else may have access to see what we're doing. And remember, this has come from the Canadian Banking Federation, that the banks, I don't care which bank it is, every single bank in Canada, every credit union in Canada will never send you an unsolicited email asking you for your password, for your PIN, for your credit card, or an access codes. The banks are asking us to tell everybody every day, don't respond to these emails, to these phone calls, to these text messages. Hang up, recognize, reject, report. Call your bank right away and say, I just got an email from you asking that my credit card was compromised or a phone call. Was that you calling me? And the bank will clear that up for you immediately. And 99% of the time say, no, that was a scam call. Thank you. Good thing you did not give any information because the banks are not going to send you an email or a text message. You always want to verify with who you're speaking with. You want to verify with donations to Canada uh, charities or, you know, charities that, that you're giving to, to ensure that it's going to the proper organization. So again, if someone is emailing you, maybe saying I'm from the Canadian, you know, Cancer Society, of course, you have every decision to donate but make sure that when you're donating, it's going to the right link. So you then can reach back out, say to Canadian Cancer, Princess Margaret, go on their link. So it's going to the right place that it's not a fake online account trying to get donation money that should go to a charitable organization. But sadly, it's going into the hands of a fraudster or a scam artist. And remember, if somebody is calling you and you didn't call them, why do they need all this personal information? We need to ask that and say, hang on, if you're my bank, shouldn't you know this? If I have an Amazon account, you would already know this information because I work with you or, or deal with you as my, you know, my retailer. Why are you asking me for my social insurance number? Why are you asking me for this information? Because you've called me, I didn't call you. Recognize, reject, report. Right there, never give out this vital information to any unsolicited call coming to you. And of course, the, you know, congratulations, the big scam prize money. You've won millions, uh, you have won a car, you have won a vacation home. But you need to pay a small fee up front. Again, my friends, the Canadian government has time and time again told us there are no prize fees or taxes in Canada. If you've won a prize, it is free. So the minute someone is, you know, trying to play on that emotion, you've won. But you just need to send me a small amount of money recognize, reject, report. It is a scam. So we've got to stay vigilant when we are on our computers, our laptops, websites that may not look correct or, or that are 
you know, trying to, as they say, spoof, which is trying to make it look like a legitimate organization, but it's not, not to engage, not to use them, and to make sure that we're, for the most part, trying to click on sites that we know are legitimate places we've used before, so we don't try and have any, as we say, you know, software that then gets put on our computer, like spyware. But having a good antivirus on our laptops can really help to protect us as well. And to be careful, right now we're hearing a lot about people calling and saying, oh, I'm calling from Apple. I'm calling from Microsoft. I'm calling from Rogers, from Bell, from Telus. There's a problem with your computer. I'm going to send you a link. You're going to click on it so I can have access to your computer because I think there is a virus on it. If they're calling you, it's a scam. These companies will never call you to tell you there's a virus on your computer. You would have to have called them. So right there, you know, it is a scam. It is a fake technical call recognize it, reject it, call Bell, Rogers, Talis, Apple, whoever called you and just say, did you call me? And report it to them so they know what is going on. Never give that person remote access. Now, if you've called Apple, if you've called Bell, if you've called Rogers, of course, you can engage with that technician and allow them to have access because you have called your reputable provider. So you know you're speaking to the right person. And always protect yourself with any type of videos or photographs you're sharing. Remember, if you don't know someone, please don't share photos with them. Please don't share intimate videos with them. Please don't share photos of your family. Images that are private and personal should only be shared with people you know 100% because once it's in the internet, it is there to stay. So be careful, be mindful, and only share with loved ones, real friends and family members only. Strong passwords make a big difference. They're harder for scammers to try and decode. So please try and always use a strong password for your login information, your banking information. Please don't use your date of birth or the year you're born. I know it's easy to remember, but it's also very easy to decode and for people to then have access into your personal information. So good, strong passwords are imperative. And a few more quick, simple tips before we wrap up to make sure we never share our PIN or passwords with someone we don't know. We'd never give them out over the phone unless we have called the bank. Not to allow anyone to have our personal and private information. Immediately, if your bank card, your debit, your credit cards are ever lost, stolen, or misplaced, immediately call the bank so they can cancel the accounts so no one is able to defraud you and take money away from you. Never respond to unsolicited emails. There's a lot going on right now where people have hacked into other people's accounts then they're able to see all their contact lists and send out emails saying, oh, hi, you know, a friend of mine just actually shared this with me today. A friend of ours just found out her daughter is very ill. If you could donate some gift cards, that would really help, especially during the holidays. And then these emails get sent out thousands and thousands and thousands of times over. People, of course, respond because they think it's coming from a friend's account, they want to help, and all it is is a fake email because somebody's computer got hacked into and they were able to access their contact list. So again, if you see this email, call your friend and say, hey, you know, 
Mary, I just got this email from you. What's going on? And then I can say, I never sent you an email. What are you talking about? So this way we can quickly determine what has happened, delete it, and not give these people a penny of our hard-earned money. Always take a moment to collect your thoughts. Contact your financial institution if your credit cards have been compromised or your bank cards. Contact the police if you feel they've been lost or stolen. Report the incidents because I want you always to protect yourselves today and from any potential future fraud that may happen. If you perhaps, you know, put your credit card into a website and then you felt to yourself, maybe this isn't correct. You know what? I'm, I don't feel right about this. Call the bank, cancel it right away, and then block that website from your computer. It happens to all of us. It's okay. The main thing is we stop it before any money can be removed from our account. Crime Stoppers is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's an anonymous phone line through the, the policing partners that you can report or suspected report if you think of uh, there's a fraudulent crime happening. They are one. 800-222-TIPS. So that's 1-800-847, sorry, 8477. And that is right across Ontario. And there's the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, which is our central agency here in Canada that collects information on criminal intelligence, such as all these false mass marketing scams, telemarketing, internet fraud, text frauds. You can report these scams to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center via phone or email at one 495 8501 So Crime Stoppers and the Canadian Anti-Fraud. So for Canadian Anti-Fraud, it's for reporting. They will open an investigation, but I always tell everybody up front, they most likely will never be able to retrieve your money back because it is almost impossible to locate where these scams and frauds are coming from. We need to stay active. We need to stay safe in our communities. Always contact a friend or a family member if you're unsure of something that has come through your email, your phone, reach out to a friend, ask them for their opinion, and know that you are doing the right thing by talking about it. Never let somebody tell you not to tell anyone. That is an intimidation factor. Our senior safety line here in Ontario is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you need to speak to somebody, you know you can call us. We are available. We have over 200 different language line interpreters available. We are day and night. We are 365 days to offer you support, information, and any referral services. So this support line is at 1-866- 299-1011, which just want to tell everyone you're never alone. You've always got someone to reach out to because our senior safety line counselors are there. If you need to talk, they are there to listen. And just back to the elder abuse prevention website, we hope that there's so much great information out there for you to come and browse our website when it's convenient for you with information from addressing and preventing financial abuse, a provincial directory of resources and supports, and of course, the most up-to-date information that we continue to update on frauds and scams that are happening and targeting our seniors across Ontario. We have our outreach through social media as well, through webinars and um, our website with tools and resources. 
always available for you to come and browse and to continue to put, again, valuable information to keep people informed, aware, and to keep prevention top of mind. And in closing, I just want to thank everybody for their time this evening. This is my information, my direct cell phone. I'm at 647-354-8854. My email is mshakuri at eapon.ca. And of course, if you uh, didn't get a chance to write this down or you ever misplace it, you can get onto our website at EAPON and all our staff information is there. So you can always find my phone number and email through the website if uh, you need to ever reach out to me personally to ask a question, a concern, I want you to know that I'm also available to speak to everyone as well. So I want to thank you for your time this evening. I am very excited now to open up for discussion, Q&A, and hopefully share with everyone some good information and to protect us, recognize, reject, report. We're all going to be stronger and more alert after this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation as well, Mary. I think everybody learned um, some valuable things there. So um, I've already gotten like three questions. So we're going to go through those. And um, if you have any questions but haven't had a chance to ask them yet, then please do type them into the Q&A box or the chat box and I will um, say them out loud and um, we can answer them. Okay, so um, the first question asks, how do you know when you have received a fake email address? So for example, Expedia. And that's a great question because they look so real. So I want to let everybody know, all of us get it. I get them every day and I'm like, is this legitimate? What the best thing I always do is if that email begins to ask me for personal information or money, right there, I know. with them. So what you want to do is make sure that you're able, of course, to reach out to that provider and ask them, did you email me? So you can call them and double check. And companies have no problem with this. They actually encourage, they rather have you double check with them because they don't want to see any of their customers become victims of frauds and scams. Amazon has been so duplicated where it looks so legitimate. I tell you, I've come this close every day and I'm like, and then I just say, hang on, let me call them. Something doesn't feel right. So take a moment, let's recognize it, and we can figure it out if it's legitimate or not. So it is getting hard, sad to say, it is hard to tell. So the onus is on us to be more vigilant to figure it out, sadly. Great question, though. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next question is asking, uh, oh, first they're thanking um, you for this very helpful information. Um, and they're also asking, uh, would a fraudster be able to take access of the deed of your home or condo? Sadly, yes. So we have heard situations where door-to-door -door salespeople coming and posing as utility companies, um, insurance companies, they get you to, you know, high pressure sales. You need to sign an agreement. We're going to lower your bills. You know, the promises are always the most amazing promises. The fine print is almost impossible to read or understand. And what happens is you sign something, no, unknowingly they've pressured you. And in that fine print, it can say, if you don't pay this amount, we now have ownership or can put a lien on your house. It's horrible. 
The police are trying to crack down on these people. It is illegal. They can be taken to court, of course, and that can take time and money. My advice, everybody, don't open the door. Don't let somebody into the house unless you know them unless you called your utilities company. I don't care if they're telling you I'm from the children's hospital, I'm from the, uh, you know, society to get uh, donations. I don't know. Did I call you? No, don't come in my house. It's sad, but we have to become to a point where we just don't know. Don't let them in. And please don't sign anything until you've double checked it with somebody else a friend a family member someone you trust don't sign anything please because you just we just don't know what can be in that fine print so be careful definitely um and so somebody else has said great resources. Thanks. So it's great that you're finding that useful. Um, mm -hmm. And they also asked, should a person who has encountered a scam call Crime Stoppers, Anti-Fraud Center, or both to report it? Great question. So again, if um, I always say to report, if you've been a victim, definitely call Crime Stoppers. Or even if you suspect of a scam going on, you can call them as well because it's an anonymous call and it's good that they're aware and you can report it also through the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre because the more data and intel they have, the stronger they're able to put an investigation together and catch these bad people. So you can definitely do both. All right, that's excellent. Um, and someone else had asked, um, what measures are taken to create this awareness amongst the senior community? Because most of them don't participate in webinars like this or are tech savvy, for example. Excellent question. And our role is, of course, to try and not only do things via social media, but to come out in person. Now, we know COVID put a huge deterrent on that, unfortunately. So as restrictions are lifted and things are safer now, one of our missions and goal with working with our partners, so Elder Abuse Prevention Ontario policing partners, to come out as much as we can back into community so we are visually in front of our seniors and can bring this information to them. So that is our goal and hope now as things are safely opening up day by day more and more we want to be back in person and bringing this message out with our community partners so great questions we got a very good audience today amazing questions yeah i agree <laughs> these are great um okay so another question um i was recently advised that a at a teachers union um i belonged to 20 years ago was hacked and my personal information was compromised. Um, this included name, address, phone number, member ID, date of birth, and SIN. Um, so they were asking what they could do um, about uh, that situation, or what could a fraudster do with that information? And sadly, because once, again, great question is, because they have this personal data, they may be able to, you know, sadly use this to open up a credit card, to open up a, uh, you know, a, a bank account somewhere to impersonate fake ID. So it's frightening because once they have a lot of this personal information, what then can happen is they want to impersonate you. We've heard things where people then open up, get a car loan in your name. Next thing you know, you know, you're on the hook for this because it's been impersonated. So always good idea to keep up to date with your credit report, your credit score, to know if any new loans have been opened, any new credit cards have been applied for. A lot of our personal insurance company have fraud protection against these impersonation scams. So they can instantly see, you know, if you've applied for something, contact you and you'll be wait a minute, I didn't apply for a $80,000 car loan. This is someone who's sadly hacked my information is trying to impersonate me. So again, stay vigil and work with your insurance companies and your credit 
card unions, credit scores to make sure nothing is opened up unless you authorized it. Of course. Um, okay, so another question in the chat, another personal account. Um, so this person has been getting scams over text. Uh, somehow they know that they're waiting for a package to be delivered and they say we're not able to deliver that package. Um, and it seems so real because they're actually waiting for something to arrive. So how would you know? Because my friends, we're all waiting for a package. So let's just think for a moment. You know, it's such a I, you know, I hate to say it, but it's a great scam, right? Because we all wait for packages, you know, during COVID and even now with the holidays and it's Black Friday in the U.S. and Thanksgiving, we all order packages. So these con artists use that technique because it is the most simplest thing. A lot of us have friends and family overseas and, you know, they tell us things are stuck in customs. So again, Let's recognize for a moment, why do I have to pay to get my package from a company that I, you know, from Amazon, uh, from UPS, from Pure Later? No. So right there, delete it, contact Canada Post, if let's say, because I get a lot of them from Canada Post, and just say, I have a feeling it's a scam, but I just want to double check. Are you holding my package? And Canada Post will say, I'm sorry, it's a scam. Thank you for not engaging. They use the most every day-to-day -day techniques to try and bait us in and, and get us in. I, I remember, remember when um, the Ford government did the refund for our license plate stickers? Not only had Mr. Ford or Premier just announced it, within 20 minutes, Fake text scams were going out saying, you're entitled to an early refund. And they wanted you to click, send $9.99, and boom, it, it, instant. And because people thought, oh, wow, thanks, Mr. Ford. This is coming through quickly. So they're constantly trying to be ahead of us to get us on emotional things that are every day make sense to us, but we're smarter than them and we're going to recognize it. So great, great uh, conversation and questions. They're perfect. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, I guess this is more of a general question, um, but someone was asking if it's possible to receive confirmation that they've participated in this webinar. Um, I, I don't know, maybe I can ask. Uh, yeah, so I mean, for sure. I mean, we're not uh, given uh, a certificate or something, uh, but we definitely can affirm or, you know, even connect with this person in the future. And this is also, this session will be, oh, it's being recorded. So it's also going to be available on demand. And if you have further questions also, I can provide more information. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so someone has asked, uh, would your organization be willing to give a presentation to seniors, um, to a seniors group at a church? Yes, most definitely. So it, on our website, um, we have what's called a training and education request form. Uh, you can fill that out and or just. can um, reach us. So again, our phone number for our head office, or um, I can put the link in for the training form in the chat box. Would that help? And then maybe the audience would be able to see that. Yeah, for sure. Oh, did I freeze or did... Yeah, I think it's been a bit choppy in the last couple of minutes maybe in the last 20 seconds I guess oh no sorry <laughs> yes okay I'm gonna put the link in for yes. our um I'm just gonna end this to get our training request form and then you can reach out to us and of course book in 
a future presentation with us. And of All course, right. you can call our office as well. Oh, I, I just wanted to say we're le reaching kind of the last couple minutes of um, the webinar. So um, I'm going to go ahead and ask one more question and then I think we can wrap up. Um, if your question didn't get answered today, then um, you can definitely reach out, you know, using the resources that were provided to um, ask the question, you know, a different way um, online. And yeah, so uh, we'll just answer uh, this last question and then go on from there. Uh, so someone has asked, is there such fraud activity where they create fake bank entries to our bank accounts as a deposit, then call us and ask us to send that money back? So again, the, the, re recognize that the bank will never call you to send money back. So uh, if they deposited money in and they're trying to get to get money out, do not engage in the call. Call the bank immediately and find out what is going on with your account. If anything looks suspicious or fraudulent on the account, the bank can immediately shut that account down. Never accept an unsolicited call asking you for money. Recognize it. That is a fraudulent call. Contact your bank. Work with them directly. All right. So, well, thank you, Mary. It's been uh, such a great presentation. I think our clients really value this presentation, especially during these days. Just, re you know, we're, we're having a Black Friday in a few days. We also, yes. we have holidays coming up, Christmas and holidays. So it's a time for, you know, protecting ourselves from this type of fraud and scams. Yes. Uh, I just have a final question, maybe uh, just thinking about uh, some uh, clients that are newcomers or speak other languages, what could, what could you advise to those clients? Yeah, I think we lost her. Oh, oh I'm you... sorry. I know it just glitched again. I'm so sorry. No worries. No worries. So no, I, my, my question was, uh, regarding newcomers, some, some newcomers might be watching this presentation. So what kind of advice do you have for seniors that are newcomers that speak another language? So what advice you have for them to protect themselves from fraud and scams? Great question. Again, for our newcomers, we work with so many different multicultural centers and agencies. If you are a newcomer and someone is trying to target you and frighten you, please reach out to your local community center, reach out to a local faith group that you may belong to, Speak to maybe um, if you've got a social worker you work with. And of course, you can call the senior safety line. We have 200 language line translators available. It's free of charge. And we are there to listen, to talk to. And if you feel unsafe or unsure about a phone call, a text, an email that came, reach out to us. And one of our counselors could be able to help and probably reassure you not to be frightened, not to worry, and nothing is going to happen to you. You are safe. No one is going to come to your door and arrest you. These terrible ways they try to frighten you that the RCMP is coming, the police. Please, everybody, that's not going to happen here. That is not how things are done. They want to scare you and you know you are safe and you have resources to reach out to within your community, within your faith group, and with Senior Safety Line, there is always help. So never worry, please. I want you to feel safe. Well, thank you so much, Mary. It's been a pleasure to have you today. And you. so I hand it over to uh, Ishika to wrap up. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Yes. So like Herman said, thank you, Mary. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in as well. Um, hopefully this webinar was valuable for you. I think there's there's a lot of thank yous in the uh, chat box. So that's good to see. That means um, a lot. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so you can watch this webinar again if you would like. The presentation will be available on demand uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, and also, if you want any more information on education, programs, and support, you can visit our website at dementiahelp.ca or register to our weekly roundup. Um, and that, with that being said, have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Be well, be safe, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night.